what we have here is uh, an old turntable out of the basement. This was my wife's turntable, so I wasn't allowed to break it or tear it apart. And an oscilloscope. And over here we have a 9 volt battery, which is providing power through a little circuit. And some of the power is going over here and lighting an LED. And here you can see my fingers lit up. And another part of the circuit down here is supplying power to a light sensor. And the, the purpose of this project is I wanted to be able to generate some arbitrary waveforms for another project I'm working on. So I want to be able to generate triangular waves, sine waves, square waves, those sort of things. Because uh, I'm going to feed them in and then I'm going to expect a different result coming out. But it turns out I didn't have any of that test equipment in my lab. I could have just ordered something for 40 bucks off online, but I, uh, uh, I decided to do it in a much more contrived way. So what I did was, is I created these discs. So you see here's a disc with, with half black and half white. And I thought, oh, I'll put this on the turntable. I'll use the light sensor, and I'll feed that into the oscilloscope, and that will create a wave. So can you guess what kind of wave a black and white disc will create? Well, let's find out. And so you see over in the oscilloscope, it's creating a square wave. Whenever it's going under the bright portion of the disc, the light sensor reads high, and so you see a high signal. And whenever it's going under the dark portion, it, it shows low on the oscilloscope. So you get a square wave. What do you think you'll get with this? Hey, look at that. You get a square wave but a much higher frequency, a much higher pace, because it's going black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. So it's going up and down on the oscilloscope here. What about this? Well, this one's a bit more of a trick, because I've got some grays in here. I haven't just got blacks and white. Let's find out what we get with this. You get a lot of noise, which is great. If you want to generate sort of a staticky sort of signal, and you're going to process it in some way, this, this works quite well. I got a tougher one for you. What do you think this disc does? You can see it starts out black and on the other side it's got a lot of white. But it's got this graduated black to white kind of gray portion in here. What do you think it's going to do? Let's let a couple of waves go by. There we go. This is called a sawtooth wave. It's where it comes up and then it gradually drops off. So it comes up and gradually drops off. Cool. What about this disc? <laughs> so this one kind of goes through, gets, it has a black peak and a white peak, so it's got kind of grays on this side and then grays on this side. Let's find out. It's a triangle wave. Kind of. I mean, it's not perfect, but it, it's a triangle wave. The Because of the light sensor, it doesn't have an extraordinarily uh, uh, wide range. And therefore, when it gets into the darks, it has difficulty discriminating between the different levels of dark. I have a potentiometer here where I could adjust that slightly, but this is pretty good. That's a pretty good triangle wave. Okay. If that's a triangle wave, then what's this? It still seems to have white. It still seems to have dark. It's got fewer grays in between. It kind of looks the same, kind of, but not really. It's a sine wave, sort of. We still haven't got the darks as, as deep as we'd like, so we're not getting the troughs, the nice smooth troughs there, but it, it's kind of a sine wave. So if you really are stuck and you have no other way of generating a signal, and there's no signal generator store nearby for you to buy it, you can use a turntable or you could just use a motor that you have lying around, print out some discs with the right patterns on them, and you can create an arbitrary wave to feed into your project. Hope you had fun watching this. Thank you. Bye.